I've been saying now for about a week that I was going to make a video explaining and showing how to restore your infotainment system back to factory stock. This was mainly for those people that somehow managed to soft brick their systems where it goes into a boot loop and only gets to the Mazda logo. My ultimate goal with that was to actually soft brick my own car and fix it. But before I did that, I wanted to do the preliminary research to make sure everything would go accordingly. But what I ended up finding out was that when the system is soft bricked like this, or it has the boot loop from the Mazda logo, the only chance of being able to recover it is if you are on the older firmware version, which means no Android auto install, and also means you need to have some computer knowledge and the ability to SSH into your car. Those on the newer firmware versions would have had to specifically set up the SSH client Wi-Fi and set up Wi-Fi completely in order to have any chance of actually restoring it. So what that means is for most of the people that installed anything using either the all-in-one tweak tool or the Android auto installer, if you would have done a factory reset or something managed to happen during the install, there's unfortunately nothing you can do in terms of trying to recover it on your own. So all you can really do right now is bring your car back to Mazda and have them fix the problem. They have the ability to either flash it back to stock through their own means or they can just replace it for you, which in that case I hope you have a valid warranty. One additional thing that I've realized and that I was able to actually find out about this whole system, the Mazda CMU, is that it's actually not entirely uncommon for the system to just completely die and cause a boot loop. So for those of you that think you were the only reason, or this software was the only reason why it actually ended up having the boot loop, it very well may not have actually been you or the software whatsoever. It could have just done it all on its own. Some of the reasons out there, people have no idea what they are. Others just connecting up their phone or whatever else. It's a shame this happened in the first place. None of the developers knew what was happening until it was too late until people started to say over and over again that their systems were crashing or that when they would reset the system or factory reboot it, the uh, system would no longer come up. And also the fact that there is no way to recover it right now really sucks. So at this point in time, the developers actually removed Android Auto from the all-in-one tweak tool. And in terms of the Android Auto installer, it's still out there, but it's very much labeled now beta alpha mode or beta and alpha testing. And the uh, potential risk involved with it is now explicitly stated, which should have been known from the get-go, whether it be following my videos or any other videos, that this is beta and alpha software. It's not through Mazda, so there's always an inherent risk of messing up your system. Um, and even when people would ask me in the comments if there was a risk or if Mazda would cover it or if it voids the warranty, I would explicitly say that yes, it does void the warranty. There is the risk. And there is a way to uninstall it, but it, it still doesn't counteract the potential risk of messing up your system. So I'd like to say I'm sorry to those that did end up having a soft brick system. I'm going to say go to Mazda and using the least amount of words possible, tell them that your system just isn't working anymore. I'm hoping they just, they're able to fix it without any issues. And and it doesn't cause any problems. I'll be keeping an eye out just in case there is any revelations that come out about the ability to recover the system. Um, I'm sure once I hear that I'll be posting something either on my website in my videos where I'll create a new video altogether. Hopefully in the near future we are able to figure something out because the current situation is not ideal especially from a developer standpoint. As far as my car and what I currently have I still have Android Auto installed with the all-in-one tweak tool and I'm still using it almost on a daily basis. Aside from the Google services messing up Android Auto, um, I reverted back to that and now I'm actually able to use it again. But I'm also using a Nexus 6 running the Android Developer Preview 3 or 4. I know a lot of other people are still having issues even with the older Google Play services being able to access it. But with each new release, there's less and less issues, even if there is still the risk of bricking your system with the system restore. I guess until a fix is found, just keep checking back go on the forums, see what people are finding out there, and once we do find something, I'll go ahead and let you guys know.